Welcome to this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Let's roll that intro and get stuck into this week's news. First up this week is that the latest pro triathlete that's across all forms of triathlon prize money ranking list has been published. Gwen Jorgensen and Mario Muller lead the rankings and only two athletes have been averaging more than $10,000 a month in pro prize money, while the 21 athletes have been averaging more than $5,000 a month. So all that goes to show is that the hundreds and hundreds of pro triathletes out there earn really little in terms of prize money, and if they didn't have the little bits of sponsorships and endorsement deals, they would be way below minimum wage level. Next up is that the Angry Bird certainly uses a def- different definition of easy compared to the rest of us. Daniela Rafe decided to do Ironman Switzerland at the last moment. She entered about two days before the event. And with the sole goal of validating her Kona slot. And in her words, she was just going to be taking it easy. And because she was racing Ironman Switzerland within seven days of coming within uh, four minutes of Chrissy Wellington's world record. So obviously she was carrying through a certain degree of fatigue. So her words, not mine, was, I'm going to be taking it easy in Switzerland because I just want to validate my ticket. The net outcome was Angry Bird smashing Switzerland's course record by eight minutes. So that certainly is a very different definition of easy day. Next up is relating to the Rio Olympic Games. And British athletes heading into Rio have been using virtual reality headsets together with 360 degree video as a visualization tool uh, so that the Olympic course will feel almost local by the time they get there. This is especially useful for the triathletes and the super technical Rio bike circuit. Then lastly, before I get on to the um, individual uh, brands of triathlon and their specific news and results, remember to check out the Coach Edu playlist right here on YouTube. Um, And the playlist is called How the Race Was Won. I take a number of triathlons from last weekend and analyze how each of those were how each one of those um, triathlons was won, and the link to that uh, to that new playlist is down below in the show notes. Then next up we've got Ironman, and Ironman's Women for Try initiative has named 14 triathlon clubs that will each receive a $2,500 scholarship uh, or a $2,500 grant, should I say. And it's a development grant. And there are five college students that will each receive a $5,000 scholarship each. While this program is absolutely commendable in that it uh, offers support specifically to female athletes, it would be awesome to see that this great program is not limited only to American clubs and only to American athletes. After all, Ironman is a global brand and there are far more uh, there are uh, triathlon nations out there in far more desperate need of financial support than the US triathlon market. That's my, just my personal take on the right today. Then, as far as Ironman events are concerned, Last week, and uh, we had on Saturday the 23rd, was the Ironman Lake Placid. Uh, only a women's race at Ironman Lake Placid, and that was won by Heather Jackson of the USA. Then on to the 24th of July, we had Ironman Switzerland, where Daniela Reif smashed the field completely, finishing a, uh, just on about a half an hour ahead of second place. And uh, so she won the ladies' race there quite easily, while running... Uh, skilled next of Switzerland won the men's race. Then, still on on Sunday the 24th, we had the uh, Ironman Canada that was held in Whistler. Only a men's pro race at Ironman Canada, and that was won by Andy Potts. Then there were two 70.3s that took place. The first was the Ironman 
70.3 Alberta, Canada. Uh, Jennifer uh, Spildner of the USA won the ladies' race, while Joss Amberger of Australia won for the men. Then there was the Ironman 70.3 in Whistler, Canada. That was the sort of uh, kid brother event of the Ironman Canada. There was no pro race happening at the Ironman Canada, so no pro results to report on there. This coming weekend, we have two events for Saturday, two events for Sunday. On Saturday, we've got the Ironman 70.3 Budapest in Hungary, and we've got the Ironman Weinman, which is taking place in Windsor, California, USA. Then on Sunday the 20, Sunday the 31st of July, we've got the Ironman 70.3 in Ecuador, that's in Manta in Ecuador. Then there's the Ironman 70.3 in Netherlands, and that's in the city of Limburg, Netherlands. And I noticed that the Ironman website, obviously being an American website, loves to call Netherlands the Netherlands. Just like there's a nature park in South Africa called Rocklands that all the Americans that arrive there call it the Rocklands. That's almost like, like the same as the rest of the world talking about the Minnesota, the Chicago, the New York. If the official name is without the prefix of the, then please use the proper name. Now we move on to Challenge Family News. And Challenge Family have announced that the Half Challenge Melbourne for 2017 will be rebranded to be the Asia Pacific Triathlon Championship. Then as far as last weekend in Challenge was concerned, there was a um, challenge event that took place on Saturday the 23rd of July. It wasn't listed at all on the Challenge uh, Family events calendar on the Challenge Family website, but yet it was an event that took place. Now surely Challenge, if you've got events taking place, it is vitally important for you to put these events on your website that people coming to your website can find out about them. After all, the folks that put on these, these events pay you a fair chunk of license fee to be able to have the event, so surely you can do some sort of marketing promotion on your website as far as these, these upcoming events are concerned. As far as the Half Challenge Iceland was concerned, Heather Wirtel of Canada won the ladies race, while Kevin Cullington of the USA won the men's. Then on Sunday the 24th of July, there was the Half Challenge Poznan and the Full Challenge Poznan. The, these two events were listed on the Challenge Family website, but there were no results available whatsoever. I had to get through to eventually the Polish website and managed to figure out who picked up the pro race results as far as that, that event was concerned. And for the Half Challenge Poznan, which, uh, as I mentioned in Poland, you've got Maria Sesnik of Poland winning the ladies, while David McNamee of Great Britain won for the men. Then for the full challenge Poznan, you had Eva uh, Bugdal of Poland winning for the ladies, and Dennis uh, Skietako of Slovenia winning the men. This coming weekend, according to the Challenge Family website, there are no Challenge Family events whatsoever. Now we move on to the modality of Xterra. And Xterra's website has no um, Xterra news of any specific general value other than um, internal brand marketing on their website for this week, so there's no news for me to report on there. As far as last weekend's racing was concerned, on Saturday the 23rd of July on the World Tour, there was the Xterra Paris Sound in Ontario, Canada. No results available for this, week, this event whatsoever. I even went into the Xterra Paris Sound website, and when I clicked on results, I got Xterra Mine Over Matter. So, either the event didn't take place at all, or there are just simply no results available anywhere on the internet. Then, as far as this coming weekend is concerned, two Xterras to look forward to in Europe. You've got Xterra Italy, and then across on the um, Pan-American side, you've got the Xterra Dominican Republic.
Finally, we move on to the ITU. And the ITU has announced that it has licensed technology from the UCI to combat uh, mechanical cheating. In other words, uh, to detect, be able to detect electric engines inside the bikes. And this is just in time for the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. As far as events in the ITU is concerned, last week and there were no elite level ITU events taking place and this coming weekend again no elite level ITU events uh, worldwide events taking place next weekend however will be a World Cup but I'll get onto that in next week's edition of the Week in Triathlon and with that that brings us to the end of this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon be sure to like, share, subscribe post any comments, questions, criticisms that you may have in the comment section down below Remember, detailed information of everything that took place in this video will be in the show notes down below as well. And last but by no means least, remember, stay carved up for the win. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Whoa. Oh. Coach Ever.